Today in this video I'm going to show you how to install a new hard drive in your desktop PC. The hard drive of this machine is already damaged. I will install the new hard disk on this machine. So without wasting time let's start it. Hard drives are data storage devices that a computer uses to store a computer's operating system, applications, and files. You may want to install a hard drive on your computer to gain additional storage space or to replace a faulty hard drive. I will teach you how to install a hard drive in a desktop computer. Make sure you are able to install a new hard drive on your computer. If you want to install a second hard drive on your desktop PC, make sure it has an expansion slot that allows you to install a second hard drive. If you have an all-in-one PC monitor, make sure the hard drive inside the monitor is replaceable. Remove your computer panel. You need a screwdriver. Remove the side panel of the computer tower. You may need to remove both sides of the computer tower. Remove the old drive and damage hard disk. If you are removing an old hard drive, make sure any and all cables are disconnected from both the motherboard and the power supply. If the hard drive is screwed in, remove all the screws. Insert your new drive. Place the hard drive in the hard drive slot the old hard drive was housed in, or the expansion slot for a new hard drive. Secure the hard drive. Once the hard drive has been inserted, use the screws that came with it to secure the hard drive in the housing. Ideally, you should use two screws on each side of the hard drive. If the hard drive is loose, it can rattle and cause more noise and lead to physical damage. Tighten the screws to a firm tightness, but don't over tighten as that may cause damage as well. Attach the drive to the motherboard. Newer hard drives will use SATA cables, which are thin and resemble USB cables. Use a SATA cable to connect the hard drive to the motherboard. SATA cables can be connected in either direction. If you are connecting your primary hard drive, the SATA cable should be plugged into the first SATA channel. This may be labeled SATA 0 or SATA 1. Refer to your motherboard. Documentation for detailed information for your motherboard. Connect the power supply to the hard drive. Most newer power supplies have SATA power. Connectors, though older power supplies typically only have Molex, 4-pin, connectors. If this is the case, and you are installing a SATA drive, you will need a Molex to SATA adapter. Ensure that none of the cables can come undone by wiggling them a little bit. Close up your computer. Replace the case sides and reconnect your cables if you had to. Move the case to work on the inside. Plug back in and turn back on your computer. You should hear the hard drive begin to spin. Up. If you hear beeps or any jarring noises, immediately turn off the computer and check. The hard drive's connections. Install an operating system. Empty hard drives require an operating system to be installed on them before you can use your computer again. Then go to BIOS settings to see if the hard disk is BIOS show. To go to BIOS settings, I will enter the BIOS by pressing F2 or Dell button. After entering the BIOS settings, I will go to standard CMOS features and see if the hard disk is showing. Yes, my hard disk is showing. If all of your drive controllers are enabled and the drive is properly connected and functional, it should be listed in the BIOS. If the drive isn't listed, shut down your PC. Double check all of the connections, boot into the BIOS and check again. If the drive still isn't showing up and all the connections are secure, try plugging the SATA data cable into a different port on the motherboard. If you are inside the BIOS settings, locate the option that says boot, boot order. Priorities are something similar. Change the boot order so that your PC boots from the USB drive first. Then select the option to save and exit. This will reboot your PC from the USB drive. Navigate to the boot tab of the BIOS. Configure the boot order of your computer as such that it boots from the CD or ROM if you're using a Windows 10 installation CD DVD or from USB if you're using a Windows 10 installation USB. Save the changes you have made to the BIOS and exit it. Press F10 in your keyboard and save the BIOS setup. If such a problem appears during installation, then you need to boot the MBR partition. 
Scheme on the pen drive for that, you have to download the software called Rufus and Boot. The MBR partition scheme on another computer with a pen drive. Follow me on how to boot. First format your USB pen drive. After format your pen drive and download the Rufus software. I have already downloaded link in description. After downloading the Rufus software, open it after opening. Go to boot selection and select OS as you like. Go to partition scheme, then click GPT format and select MBR when done, click the start button and boot into the pen drive. When you see the status ready, you will think that the pen drive is booted. After booting the pen drive, insert the pen drive into the computer on which you are installing Windows. After booting, insert it on the pen drive and install Windows 10 on the new hard disk. When the computer boots up, it will try to boot from the installation. CD DVD or USB and ask you to press any key on your keyboard to boot from the medium. When it does, simply press any key to proceed. Select your language, time and currency, and keyboard input, and click Next, then click to install. Now Windows setup is starting. Type the product key, or click the skip button if you're reinstalling Windows 10. If you skip the product key, select the edition of Windows 10 that you're about to install and click the Next button. Click the checkbox next to I accept the license terms and click next. Select the custom, install Windows only, advanced option. Select each partition in the hard drive that you want to install Windows 10 and click the delete button. Usually, the drive zero is the drive that contains all the installation. Files. Warning, deleting a partition also deletes all data within. Select the drive zero. Unallocated space. Click the new button. Specify the amount of space, in megabytes, to allocate for the installation of Windows 10. And apps. The operating system requires at least 20 GB of space, but to prevent problems. With future updates and running out of pace to install applications, you should be creating a partition between 70 GB to 100 GB in size. Click the Apply button. Click the OK button. Alongside the custom partition, Windows 10 will also additional partitions automatically required to install and run the operating system. Optional, select the drive zero unallocated space. Click the new button to create additional partitions with the remaining space. You can always perform after the installation. Select the drive zero partition to primary from the list. Click the next button. This will start installing Windows on the drive you selected. The amount of time it takes. 
will depend on the hardware of your computer. Remove the USB flash drive and restart your computer. Once Windows is finished installing, your computer will restart automatically. Remove the USB flash drive so that it does not. Try to boot from the flash drive again. The first time Windows boots up, you will need to go through the setup process. Now setting up Windows 10 and starting Windows services. Verify your region and keyboard input. When Windows restarts, it will ask you to verify your region and keyboard input. If these are correct, click Yes. Connect to your wireless network. Select your wireless network and click Connect. Then, enter your wireless password and click Next. Now click to agree Windows license agreement. Type the PC name. Click accept to set up Cortana. Cortana is the built-in voice assistant for Windows. If you want to set up Cortana, click accept and follow the instructions. If you don't want to, do it right now, click decline. Click Yes and follow the instructions to set up the Windows timeline. Choose your privacy settings and click Accept. After waiting for a few minutes and your Windows will start automatically. Format the partitions you created once but do not format the C drive, but format the other. Drives. C drive is your system drive. If you want to see more videos like this on my channel, please comment below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.